Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Philip went down to a city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the multitudes with one accord gave heed to what was said by Philip. When they heard him and saw the signs which he did, For unclean spirits came out of many who were possessed, crying with a loud voice, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in the city. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry Cry out out with with joy joy to God, God, all all the earth. earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome your deeds. Cry Cry out out with joy joy to God, all the earth. Before you, all the earth shall bow down, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, awesome his deeds among the children of men. Cry Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. He turned the city into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. Let our joy then be in him. He rules forever by his might. Cry Cry out out with joy to God, all the earth. Come and hear all who fear God. I will tell what he did for my soul. Blessed be God, who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold from me his merciful love. Cry Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter, brothers and sisters. In your hearts, reverence Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. And keep your conscience clear so that when you are abused, those who revile your good behavior in Christ might be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing right, if that should be God's will, than for doing wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, that he might bring to us God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, If a man loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, 
and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you. Yet in a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The one who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are now at the last Sunday of the Easter season. For these past five weeks, we've been soaking in the good news of the resurrection of Jesus and what that means for us. Next Sunday, we'll celebrate the Ascension, and the Sunday after that, we will be celebrating Pentecost. This sixth Sunday of Easter is an important moment in this movement from Easter towards the celebration of the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost. And the Gospel alerts us to an incredible promise and reality that we may not be fully aware of. The words of our Gospel reading today are part of Jesus' farewell discourse, spoken just before his arrest and after the washing of the feet. It concerns those things that Jesus most wanted his disciples to remember. Whether he actually said them in exactly this way prior to his death, we don't actually know. Remember that this Gospel of John was written some 60 to 70 years after his death, from the perspective of the, of the community looking back on their relationship with Jesus. But nonetheless, they carry the weight and importance of a final legacy. In these words, Jesus addresses a very human reality, the fear we have when we lose someone who has played a significant and formative role in our lives. Perhaps you have experienced losing a parent, grandparent, or mentor who was especially significant in your life and have wondered, how will I manage without their guidance because I am not ready to do life without them? The disciples had three very formative years of being with Jesus in a very intensive and intentional mentoring relationship. After his death, he showed them himself in his resurrected life through some very significant encounters. But he will need to return to the Father. Jesus promises the disciples that although he will not be present to them in his physical form, he will not leave them desolate, orphaned, or without help. The Father is going to send another advocate in the form of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the first advocate, but once Jesus is ascended, the other advocate, the Holy Spirit, is going to be sent as comforter, guide, and teacher. The role of the Spirit is to help the disciples and all the disciples who would follow them once the physical presence of the historical Jesus was no longer accessible. And that includes us. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus walks with us now without any physical constraints of time and space. We see in the first readings that we've been looking at recently from the book of Acts that the new church needs the help of the Spirit to work out what it is to do and how. We too, in a time of much uncertainty and instability, need to be able to access God's will for us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so accessible because she abides in and with us. It is through the inner stirrings of the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we can sense what is of God and what isn't. Through the stirrings and nudging of the Holy Spirit within us, we can sift our experience. We can notice where our desires resonate most with the values of love and truth and justice. 
we experience the Holy Spirit at work in us in very tangible ways. In a moment when we feel moved to go out of our way to help someone in need, when we are able to console a person in distress, when we feel energized and filled with purpose in the work that we do for the benefit of others. Also, when we are able to speak the truth with courage or when we feel surrounded by love when we are facing a difficult moment in our lives. Sometimes we may be tempted to think the disciples of Jesus had an easier time of it. After all, they got to live with him and learn from him and to spend quality time with him in person. But in fact, we who live post the Ascension and Pentecost are even more blessed because now our access to Jesus through his Spirit is unlimited by time or space, and through the Spirit we always have direct access to Jesus and the Father. The advocate promised by Jesus to the disciples in today's Gospel has been given to us, and we are going to continue to unpack and consider this as we journey into the Ascension and Pentecost. There's something else which is extraordinary about what Jesus shares throughout the farewell discourse, and that is that he underlines the significance of relationship and that we are inextricably bound up in that love of the Trinity. Jesus says, you will know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. It's such a mind-boggling idea that it's difficult to get our heads around. It always makes me think of those little Russian dolls that rest one inside the other. To put it another way, God abides in us or makes God's home in us and we make ours in God. There is a union or oneness between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And more than that, we get to share in that union. The implications of this are astounding. It means that God simply could not be any closer to us. We share in God's life and God shares in ours. God is not watching us from a distance, as the famous Bette Midler song puts it. Rather, God is closer to us than the air we breathe. We may not always be aware of it, but that is what Jesus tells us. Jesus is telling us it's all about relationship. Not only is there an intimate relationship between the persons of the Trinity, but between the persons of the Trinity and each one of us as well. We don't just imitate Jesus, we participate in this relationship of love. The more we live conscious of this community of God's love that we are part of, and the more we keep the commandments of love, the more we are able to experience and live the abundant life of God. We don't have to wait for life after death to be fully united with God. To the extent that we allow ourselves to recognize and live in that relationship of love, that abundant life is already available for us right now. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the The kingdom, kingdom, the the power, power, and the glory are yours, now now and and forever. forever. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word, And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out 
the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.